All right, yesterday we solved systems by graphing. We graphed each each equation and we solved the, the system by finding where they connected at. All right, we found the solution by where they they inter, they crossed. Today we're going to solve systems by using a different method. Okay, we're going to substitute. Here are the rules for substituting. First thing you do is you solve for one variable. Okay, then the next thing you do is substitute into the other equation, then solve it. The last step you do is substitute the value from step two into either equation and then solve for other variable. Okay, it's supposed to be from. So substitute the value from step two into either equation and solve for the other variable. All right, so write these two equations down. All right, so we're going to solve this system. Okay, first thing we want to do is solve for a variable. We want to get one variable by itself. Well, this one's already done that. Step one's already been taken care of for you. They've already solved for y. Now, all you do is you, as the step says, as the rule say, it says substitute the first equation in for the variable in the second equation. So you put 2x plus 1 where y was. Now that we have one variable, x, we solve for it. 3x plus 2x is 5x. We subtract 1 to both sides. Gives me 5x equals a negative 10. So I divide by 5. x is negative 2. So I found my x coordinate. What I do is I plug that in in either of these equations. It does not matter which. I can plug it into here or I can plug it into here. All right? It does not matter. I just want to find y. I would go with the top one because it's already been solved for y. All right? So it's really easy. All I got to do is plug negative 2 in here for x. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, so y is negative 3. My solution is negative 2, negative 3. Alright, so that is where these two lines would cross. So instead of graphing them, we just solve it algebraically by substituting. If you graph these two, that is where it would cross. Any questions? Write these two down. We have x plus 2y equals 6, and we have 3x minus 4y equals 28. Now, the first step on the last problem was already taken care of you, taken care of for you. They already solved for a variable. In this case, they haven't. So the first thing we have to do is get a variable by itself. The easiest one is to do this one and solve for x. So I would subtract 2y to both sides. This leaves me with x equals negative 2y plus 6. That is the easiest one to solve for. If you solve for y on that one, you'd have to divide everything by 2, okay? Because you'd want y by itself. So the easiest thing to do is solve for x. Now we have our two equations. So what I do is I plug negative 2y plus 6 in for x. So 3 times negative 2y plus 6 minus 4y equals 28. I distribute the 3 because it was 3 times x. x is negative 2y plus 6. That gives me negative 6y plus 18 minus 4y equals 28. I combine my y's, my like terms, Negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10y plus 18 equals 28. Subtract 18 to both sides. Negative 10y equals 10. Divide by negative 10. My y coordinate, 
is negative one. What I do is I plug that back into one of the equations. It does not matter which one. Alright. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna plug it into the one I found, this x equals negative two y plus six. So I'm gonna plug negative one in there. Negative one times negative two is two. Two plus six is eight. So my x coordinate is eight. This gives me a coordinate of eight, negative one. And there, that is my answer. That is the solution to do two of these equations. That is where they cross. You plug two into what? I plug negative one, negative one into y right here. On the first one? Uh, I just plugged into that one. Oh, okay. Could I have done that? Could I have done it here? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, because that would give me negative two right here. I'd add two to both sides and still give me eight, wouldn't it? Yeah. I could plug negative one right here. I guarantee you'll still get eight for X. All right? It doesn't matter where you plug the Y in, just plug it in there, you solve for your X. I went with this one, Shane, because I'd already solved for X. I didn't have to do any work other than work this out. Okay, write this down. So what we do, again we solve. This is the first step's already been taken care of. We just plug in 2x minus 4 in for y. And solve for our x. I distribute the 3. That gives me 6x minus 12 equals negative 12. I combine my like terms. Well, if you notice, they're opposites. They're going to cancel each other out. This is negative 12 equals negative 12. Is this a true statement? Does negative 12 equal negative 12? Yes, it does. If it is a true statement, okay, then this is your answer. Infinite number of solutions why do you think it's that you put any number in there it's going to equal each other so what what type of line are these two going to form they're going to be perpendicular to each other to parallel what they're going to be the same line aren't they okay that means if it's an infinite number of solutions, it means they're going to cross at every point. Well, if they cross at every point, then there's two lines there, but they're over each other. Remember our infinite number of solutions from yesterday? The ones that were dependent, okay, they were the same line, okay? That's in this case. If it's a true statement, negative 12 equals negative 12, then it's infinite number of solutions. Let's work this problem. All right, so again... We just plug this in for y. Now, we treat this like that's a negative 1 times y. Okay, if, there's a, if it's minus y, we treat it as a negative 1. Okay, because we have to distribute the negative sign out. And it's just easiest if you think of that as my, negative 1y. Okay? Because if you think that's just minus, you'll just put the minus there, and it'll be minus 2x minus 3, and that's not right. Because it's actually... Minus 2x plus 3. Because you distribute the negative 1. It just changes your sign. Okay, and if you know to do that, that's fine. But make sure you know that you're supposed to do that. Well, again, we add like terms. They're going to cancel each other out. We look at this. 3 equals 8. Is that a true statement? No, it's not. Okay. That is not a true statement. So, the answer is no solution. That means they will never cross each other. Think of their slopes. What do they have to have for them to never cross? They have to be parallel, right? They have to have the same slope 
with a different y-intercept. If they're parallel, they will never cross. Okay, And that's what these two lines do. So if there's no solution, if it doesn't work out, because 3 does not equal 8, okay, that means they're parallel to each other. And here's your assignment. Hey,